Welcome. Hi, we're glad to have you as part of our very first co-creator dot space last. Today we're going to be taking you through our journey um, as to what is the co-creator space, what are our intentions, what are we hoping that you get out of it, and to kind of guide you along this piece around our you experience and our uh, our theme song of today is, of course, from the amazing Jimi Hendrix. And it is that piece to say, are you experienced? And the quote we really liked out of Jimi's song was this piece to say, I know, I know you probably scream and cry that your little world won't let you go, but who in your measly world are you trying to prove that you're made out of gold and can't be sold? And so this piece of, of Jimmy, it wasn't about doing LSD, it wasn't about doing drugs. He said it was really about that piece of um, how are you being at peace with yourself and actualizing your potential. And that really is the backbone of what co-creator space around adapt and thrive for a better way of teaming and innovating is really all about. And so now I am looking forward to introducing you to uh, me, myself, and uh, my wonderful co-creator, Anne Cecile. Yeah, hello, hello. So I'm Anne Cecile, and I wanted to share our story and how everything started. So I'm a very adventurous person, and I contact people just like that <laughs> on LinkedIn. <laughs> and I remember it was two years ago, maybe less or more, but approximately, uh, two years ago that I saw the profile of Elizabeth and I was like, oh, that's interesting what she does. So I invited her to have a call. We had a first call, awesome exchange. We decided to meet for a first coffee. And I think if we didn't have a meeting afterward, we would have stayed for hours. And we decided last year to meet again uh, for another coffee, another exchange. And that time we went crazy we spoke about the magical zone of learning and what we need to be able to learn together to co-create solutions to our most daring problems and we realized that there were many st many status quo in workplaces and we were like hey if people are able to organize a holiday in honolulu with everything that it entails why can't we trust them to organize their daily work and so with this question, we came up with the co-creator program at first, like a draft. And we said, okay, let's meet again and again and again and again. And we never stopped. And we are here today trying to help you work on something else more than just a job description and try to get away from those limits and create something new. And so that's the question of who are we to go into the world and pretend we know uh, what to do. And we thought that we were just experienced in very different areas and we had a very strong why. Mm. And so why not? Like, let's just try and see how far we can go. And so we've been um, learning with iteration and we are adapting to whatever comes up to us and say, okay, this is not working as we thought, then let's improve it. And in this VUCA world, those are skills that we are yeah, learning to develop. And we want uh, to make sure that we make music instead of noise. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the question you ask yourself too. <laughs> Exactly. And so what is this co-creation? I think it's important that we just kind of set the baseline as to what are we talking about. And at the end of the day, you know, when you go in uh, to, you know, you want to play basketball and you go to a park and there's all these other people there and you all of a sudden you, you start playing, you gel together and it's an amazing game. Okay. Not sports players, something that you might also remember are scavenger hunts. So scavenger hunts, um, you're, you're in a very different mix of people. You perhaps don't know each other before, but you have a very clear goal as to where do you want to get to. And you tap into different people's expertise. There's things that, you know, there's a lot of associated thinking. There's a lot of pieces around um, 
Sometimes you're successful, sometimes you're not, but it's really about how are you tapping into different people's expertise where you're not letting the, oh, well, he's an engineer. Oh, she's from HR. Oh, well, that person's from operations. No, those are the things that don't mm -hmm. matter. You're, you're coming together towards a common goal. And that really is the piece of what co-creation is. It's that, that teaming and being in that constructive collaboration space with one another that really gets innovative, but also um, new solutions to come to the play. Because it's not about, oh, that's always how we've done it. That's what the process description says. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's the boss. He knows better. It's really this piece of how do we help create um, an environment where people get into that pickup game, that scavenger hunt type of thinking and way of working. And that's what we mean about when we're talking about co-creator space. And so to and Cecile's point, who are we to tackle this problem? And it was that piece to say, well, if, if no one else, why not us? We know the social research. How can we make it from a theoretical to very practical and improve people's lives at work where we're really tapping into the potential that they have. And so that piece around how are they growing, how are they having an impact, and how are the relationships that we build at work doing that continual growth? Because um, we are coming into the human age of growth and that is really at the core center of um, co-creator space. So back to who we are. So I'm Elizabeth Lemke. I am the Chief Talent Navigator at Transforming Talent, which is a people and um, culture agency, um, where we really look to say, okay, how do we navigate the topic of talent um, where we're not just only looking at today and um, having an immediate focus of, oh, I need X, Y, Z. Oh, that that's doesn't exist. And on the other hand, how are we really making sure that people develop, that people grow, so that there is that continual piece of as we learn, as we work. Um, and it's not only just a work separated from your life, it's that piece of how do we have enriching experiences. So I am from trade. I was originally a... Um, <clears throat> I started in forestry, then I went into geology, archaeology, anthropology until I finally said, gosh darn it, do it, you know you want to do it. So I then got my gumption up and I studied psychology and I studied work and organizational psychology in Germany. Um, and I was, as, as one of those summer jobs, I was crawling around underneath some machines in production because um, if you work in production, you can oftentimes, um, it can help you pay off those student loans, which I had quite a few. Um, and I really realized how people were not listening to the workers on the shop floor. And it was this piece to say, but they know, they're the ones interacting with the machines the most. They're getting, um, they're, they're the ones at the forefront. How can we utilize that? How can they have a good enriching work experience? So that was for me the piece to say, my calling, how do we make people's lives better at work? Because that's where we spend a majority of our time. So that's the difference we want to make. So that created, that kind of set my foundation for working in HR. So I've worked in HR, I'll just put it this way, for 15 plus years. Uh, we won't talk about age in this one, but I am the non-millennial, non-Gen Z in this, uh, this team. Um, but is that piece to say, uh, we're, I'm, um, I may be older, but you know, I'm still learning and perhaps at times maybe a little bit more immature, but that's all part of the fun. So as I continued in my career, I went from working in the apprenticeship program and really understanding from that side to then going into a very innovative um, facility and site where our service to technicians work together with engineering sales production. And everyone really felt a piece of what are we doing and why are we doing it? And so for me, that has been kind of my story throughout my career is how do we, you know, if we don't understand what our product or our business is and what the people actually need it for, then we're not doing our jobs. So this piece to say everyone's bought in because they understand the why, what's the outcome we're looking for, and what really is a need that we're, we're covering and, and tackling. And so that has been kind of my story as to HR. Um, I left, I, my last corporate job there was as a director of HR and global talent. 
Um, and I had for years said, um, you guys need to go out and learn. So that's what I did two years ago, one of my best decisions ever. So that's that piece to say, organizational development background, very practical understanding how do we help people develop within organizations and then saying we need a different model. We can't just go after the shiny penny of agile or self-management or whatever it is and just look at the method without understanding the why and what are we hoping to get out of it and does mm. it actually make sense for us. So that's me. And just to say that for the generation non-Z, you are very good <laughs> with uh, Instagram and all those things. Sometimes I wonder, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> so, um, just to say, you, it's not a question of age or whatever. Exactly. We're in uh, next, okay, next class is on TikTok. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What are we doing? Um, <laughs> so, as I said at the beginning, I'm Anthony Graber. I forgot to say my family name, but that's okay. Um, I come from France, and so this is my story. Um, I was a, quite a rebellious kid um, because I just didn't want to learn things that made no sense to me. So if someone couldn't explain me why I needed it, then I didn't learn, and which made me, yeah, that made my time at school quite difficult because you have to learn. There is no reason for that sometimes. Um, and so, I always ask questions about the why we did stuff and why we are here and what's the meaning of creating a, a school system or whatever. Um, and as I was about to choose my path for my future career, I just didn't know what to do. And I knew uh, going abroad would be very good for my personal development. So I decided to go for an international business school. And there I had the opportunity to go abroad to uh, have a, first an internship in Spain to discover how other cultures are working and consider work as a way to get money to live your life mm. um, and other cultures have another view on that. Um, I got yeah, two bachelors, one in information system management, the second in uh, international business, worked for a few, I would say a year or so at the OECD um, where I worked with 36 nations and I really loved it to see how many people could work together without really speaking the same language um, and seeing the connections. And even if the culture were different, we had the same goal and we were just trying to cooperate. And I also had other experiences uh, in startups, uh, in small organizations, and my idea was at that time to get as many experience as possible so I could understand how organization function so I could help them change. That was, yeah, I was like 20 something. So that was my dream. Um, I decided then to go for a master's degree in the US and I studied organizational sciences, which is basically, uh, yeah, organizational sciences. I was about to translate it to German, but it doesn't make sense right now. <laughs> and so, I discovered that in the US that all the humanistic approach I was uh, raised with mm -hmm. were also supported by science. I was like, oh, if you treat people well, it's written, they work best. Okay, so I have proof that whatever I was raised with um, is true or there is a background supporting my ideas. And so I went into the world and moved to Germany at the same time looking for a job. Uh, which meant for me first learning German, which was also as a person a very big learning process because I also faced, you know, like the cultural shock you have when you know you're not coming back home. Yeah. Um, and so I did my best to learn German. I was able to find a first job in a small company. And since then, so it's been six years, I've been working as a consultant um, in different companies. Uh, I helped improve processes, analyze uh, reorganization in, in organization or with companies that were merging. I helped a uh, team work better together. And basically the question that I've been trying to answer forever is how do we connect people so that they get to the yeah, bottom of the problems and they solve the problem and how do they come together to create something better 
um, and the why is also something that was very important to me. And since a year, I've been um, hesitating to launch myself as a freelance, but then it's done. So since January this year, I'm on my own. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. And so that's about me. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Anne-Cecile. So we are your two captains. And as you can see through both of our kind of vitae that there's a common thread of how do you adapt? How do you thrive? And in my work as HR and as well as Anne Cecile, that's been the constant kind of tenor and thread as we talk to people about their careers, as we talk about, well, what do you want to, you know, how do you want to grow? Um, what's interesting? What's a challenge? What are your passions? And so as we look to what do we hope you get out of co-creator space and what are we hoping to get in terms of your feedback, your your participation, we see this as a really a community of practice. And so it is that piece to say, how are we challenging each other? How are we looking to see what are those questions? And so our question for you all is to say, if you think back on the last 18 months, what happened? How have the last 18 months helped you grow and change who you are right now? Because it is that piece to say, how are we taking time to stop, take stock and say, okay, what, how, have my, how have I changed my approach? How have I had perhaps some different insights or some new experiences that really changed that outlook in terms of what I thought was the baseline, where it's moved? And so as we look to co-creation, it's really about how do we help that iterative learning process to ask ourselves, um, what have we learned? What have we gained? And how are we going to use this, this information for different situations that come up that we can't predict? And so the co-creation program and what we're going to be talking through over a series of different blasts is really talking about what are those elements around how do we thrive within those different spaces of learning? Okay. Yeah. And so we wanted also to make have a little focus on why we are doing that mm -hmm. and that's what we call our co-creator why and we are in this new world of work where everything is volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous and we just wonder how do people companies and and communities thrive and come up with solutions that their customer and users are grateful to have and one part of the answer seems to be by purposefully designing services and products that are also deliberately including people in their development. And so there is more bridge building as uh, wall buildings. And the idea is not to follow the familiar, the things we already know, and uh, we hope it's going to work out a mentality, but it's to be a co-creator of the new reality that we want to see and <clears throat> the next question is that how does the work people do facilitate adaptable solutions designed with the customer customer in mind so with the we're not sending it to the person who buys it but to the next one and how do we have a service or a product that does take into account everyone that is going to use or be using the service or the product. And we know the world is full of possibilities and we can help organizations to enable their employees, their people to thrive. And that's also the question we want to ask. How can we help enable organization in which people thrive? So people are happy to go to work, to give their best, to come together and yeah, grow. Like, I think that's one part of the co-creator space. It's this idea of growing, of intentionally doing things together. And that's also the idea of creating a culture in which everyone, the culture, the, not the culture, the people, the company, and the communities thrive together. Yeah. So we want to make sure that it's not too theoretical. So we really, it's very practical in terms of what we're doing and what you're going to be experiencing over the co-creator blast, blast over the next couple of months, it will be very interactive. And so the piece is, is um, oftentimes you get told a lot 
Um, but it's very different to experiment it on your own environment, within your own team, within your organizations. And again, back to that piece around the individual, how am I growing with this? What does it mean for me? And so as we go in, we're going to be talking around the different kind of stations of what co-creation is. You know, how are we enamoring the users, users? What are those principles that guide us in terms of that thought process of, you know, what are the decisions that we make? What is the why? What are the different beliefs? What are, the, what are those elements around culture? And how does talent evolve? What does leadership look like? Um, how are we really looking beyond what our, our resources are in terms of teaming and thinking beyond that? And so this piece to say, how are we adapting? How are we creating longer term sustainable um, communities of teams where high performance teaming is the norm rather than just something that we look at in terms of a poster. And so that's what we wanted to do is there's a lot of this terminology. We want to make it very practical and very applicable so that people in their or can take this into their own organizations. They can either be a team lead, they can be from HR, they can be from an innovative hub, they can be the, the best operator that um, has, has shown up on the floor. So this is a piece to say, how do we create an inclusive organizational development program with personnel development for organizations that help them grow and at the end of the day where the people in an organization and that have the touch points on the organization are galvanized in terms of this is why we're doing it. Mm. Because at the end of the day, we spend a lot of time at work, we want to make sure it's enriching and growing. So those are our whys and our thought around what we've kind of what we've come up as with the co-creator space journey and what we're where we're hoping to take you along with us. Exactly. And I think we can already talk about the next class. Mm -hmm. what we want to be talking about and we are uh, willing to go with the principles being co-creator space and we say that principles are over processes they have to win we have to know why we do stuff instead of just following a process we don't really understand and know why it's done so yep. that's what's coming up exactly so mark your calendars that's going to be on tuesday march 3rd 2020 at 6.30 p.m. CET. Okay. So with that, thank you very much. We're really looking forward to your comments and questions. Yeah. So please send them in to us. If you'd like to get to know a little bit more about um, what this program is, feel free to reach out to either Anne Cecile or I. The website, of course, is www.cocreator.com. Um, space dot space and then you can also find us on Instagram which is uh, co-creator dot space wonderful yeah, exactly and Thank it's co so creator dot space for the website <laughs> oh yes <laughs> <laughs> yes we're ready to blast <laughs> all right all right I love it So I still have to smile because it's still recording. <laughs> and I